I hope you enjoyed hearing from our pupils uh, on the virtual tour. We're now going to try and address some of the questions that you either submitted um, via your registration or um, some that have popped up during tonight. I have in front of me an iPad, so I'm sorry that I don't make eye contact with you all the time. It's because when I'm looking at your questions, they're popping up on my iPad and we'll try and address those as we go through. I have here Mrs. Copen, who's the deputy head, and she's going to address some of those questions as well. I'm going to start with a question that uh, quite a few of you posed on your application um, and registration forms, which says, how many pupils do you have per class and about maximum numbers? We are unique in the fact that we have got small numbers per group. Um, and we try and keep those manageable for the staff and the pupils learning experience. I can't directly answer that because it varies from year to year and it tends to be slightly lower in the juniors than it does compared to the seniors. But we believe that small classes contribute to the happiness and success of every pupil. Um, another question that was posed on the registration form by quite a number of you was about ensuring girls mix with boys, although that's not so relevant from next year, because as you most probably know, we are going co-educational from September 2021 from reception down. Um, however, I recognise that some of you are concerned that our pupils don't get to mix with boys. And the answer is they actually do. Because we're part of the Oak Tree group of schools, the other schools in the group are mixed. So when we get together with boys and with girls, these are for trips, events, competitions um, and whole school activities like the year three camp. Uh, we also take part in national and regional events through ISA, the Inter um, Independent Schools Association. And these involve pupils from all settings, boys, girls, from the north of England to the south of England. In addition, um, some of our GCSE subjects are taught with Normanhurst pupils. They're either here on site at Brayside or they're at another Oak Tree school. And again, there are girls and boys from both of those schools. We aim to provide a balanced experience for the girls. So when they go to sixth form, that are invariably mixed, they are equipped to work alongside their peers. Um, I'm gonna take a question actually from the iPad. Um, it's about competition and small schools. I think what this person is trying to ask is about um, being a small school, how do we know what competition looks like? And um, Mrs. Copeland, do you wanna answer that one? I can answer that one. We are a small school, but don't forget we're part of a group of schools. We're part of the Oak Tree group of schools. Um, there are four schools that junior pupils start to compete with in various ways throughout the years. They do things such as mental arithmetic competitions, spelling bees. Uh, we have had uh, general knowledge quizzes over the years. And of course, sporting events between the four schools. We're also part of ISA, as Mrs Moon has already said. That means that nationally we can take part in competitions as well. That might be sport, art, drama, uh, writing, to name a few. Uh, we also take part in local sports uh, fixtures with other local schools, and that's at more of a senior level. So it might be things like football or perhaps netball events. We took part in a, a parliamentary debate last year for the first time and our pupils were awarded Best Newcomer Award. Healthy competition is important, it's important for life and we aim to give pupils exposure to the events, all sorts of competitive events to prepare them for life beyond Brayside. Thank you. Um, I'm going to take another question actually that's just popped in and it's about uh, the benefits of small class sizes. And Mrs. Cap, do you want to answer that as well? I can answer that one. And actually, I can probably answer this one as well as any member of staff at Brayside. Mm. Small class sizes are the best thing that we offer. They mean a productive relationship between staff and pupils. They mean that staff touch base with every single pupil every single day. Marking can be meaningful, it's personalised to the learning of the individual. An incredible amount of feedback happens when you have small class sizes. It's given frequently, it focuses on specific strengths and areas of improvement for the children. Uh, pupils get to know each other really well and they develop lasting friendships that are supportive and caring. And it means that we get to know the, mm. the pupils extremely well and we can celebrate their successes in a meaningful and sincere way. Yeah, and I, and I would add to that, actually. It's really nice to be able to know the name of every child in your school mm. and, and what makes their, their lives really interesting and unique. Um, and as a head teacher, I'm really proud to be able to do that. Um, a question that came in on the registration form was, um, and we've had before when we've taught, is about bullying and how do we deal with it? And again, I'm going to ask Mrs Copeland to address that. Um, 
any any school any setting has the the potential for bullying to to take place so we have an anti-bullying policy that's incredibly important so that all staff who work in the school know exactly how we would deal with a bullying incident um, and how we would support the individuals who are involved the the second strand to that is that we teach children from a very early age what bullying looks like how to recognize bullying uh, and how to report bullying particularly if you're not the victim but you happen to be a bystander who knows it's going on so we empower children as well as making sure that our policy is watertight um, being a small school means that issues don't go unnoticed um, class teachers form tutors all members of staff can deal with these quickly. Um, we aim to involve and to listen to all of the pupils. Um, we listen to issues and we, we try and resolve the difficulties very quickly and with sensitivity. Thank you. Um, a question that came up on the registration form was about recognising and celebrating the talents of all students um, in the whole of the school environment. And I think I mentioned this in my speech about our reward system. It really is designed by the pupils. In fact, it's been redesigned recently when we had um, school closure for a, a period of time. We had a lot of lessons and assemblies over Zoom. And uh, the seniors really liked the fact that the juniors had something called Purple Book Assembly. Um, and through the work of the school council, they suggested to me that we have that as a whole school event and which we now do every Friday. And that's all thanks to the pupils being stakeholders and having an interest in their school. Um, it does mean being small that we can have um, a sh we can have um, an idea of pupils' talents. Um, they can take the lead in those things. We get to know pupils really, really well, which means that we can give them an opportunity in an area that they really shine and excel in. We've got a house system with reward points. I mentioned that in my speech, um, but these can be for individual pieces of work or something that they've done or collaborative pieces of work as well. Um, you can receive house points for upholding the aims and values through your positive actions in the school. Um, every Friday now we have this whole school assembly, albeit virtual at the moment, and pupils are rewarded with certificates and postcards for their good work and they really, really enjoy that. Um, I'm going to go to another question that's popped in actually, it's about, um, someone has asked what the benefits for, of an all through education is at, at school at Brayside. Um, I can tell you that pupils love being on site, that we can now accommodate juniors and seniors, so we're kindergarten all the way to year 11. I really think that's fostered a new sense of responsibility this year where pupils take on roles throughout the school, which means they have to be a positive role model at all times. And the older pupils love supporting the younger pupils. It can either be in play or with their learning experience. And I know that the younger pupils are really thrilled when a senior pupil talks to them, reads them, tell them something they didn't know before. And it, I've really seen them develop stronger relationships between all pupils in the school now that we're on one site. Um, I think the staff find an all through education thoroughly re 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 rewarding. Um, I know that when pupils come in from kindergarten, you see their journey all the way through to year 11. There is no better feeling than when you've seen someone who's come in from such a tiny age to go out being really confident um, and a successful young person with a great personality, exceptional grades going out into the world of work or into sixth form, it's, it's an amazing feeling and it's just, there's no other feeling quite like it. Um, a question that was posed on the registration form is about triple science. Um, in G at GCSE, uh, I encourage the girls to take triple science, which means that they do three discrete subjects, physics, chemistry, and biology. I know that the staff we've got are experts in their disciplines, which means that children are taught precisely and their knowledge and skills are embedded so that they can really take that GCSE on. The reason why I encourage children to do triple science is because I believe in maximising their opportunity for success. And um, to me, that's opening more doors from an earlier stage than it is closing it. And if pupils want to go and do science at A level, they're really well prepared for that. So the post 16 study study bit seems seamless if you're doing triple science. Um, another question, I could just see it's popped up here and I think I saw GCSE somewhere. Yeah, um, it says, um, do we make children take languages at GCSE and does it help them with, with their sixth form applications? Um, I think we've got a really robust careers programme here that helps children make informed choices about their future. Pupils do well here because they choose the GCSE pathway that they believe they will enjoy and be successful in. I encourage them to, to make a careers profile in year nine 
sometimes even before, so that they're able to make really good decisions about their learning style and their enjoyment. If that involves a language, then great. If it's not, I'm confident they've still made those right decisions for their future. And I think if you pick something you enjoy and you're good at, then you will naturally do well. Um, a question from the registration form, um, that I think about seven people, seven or eight people put forward is about independent school six forms and how do we help them prepare. I said a little bit about it in the speech. In fact, I said it to us because it was so good. Um, each cohort of children is different here and they choose different things depending on what career path they want to take. Um, earlier in year, in year 11, I met with parents. We have that meeting every year. Obviously this year it was virtual and about their post 16 choices. And we're really fortunate that we have someone on our staff, Mrs. Martin Burns, who's a science teacher, but she was actually a director of sixth form in a local, um, in a local school in the area. Um, she was talking to them about what sixth form life is going to be. And I do the bit that explains how you apply for sixth forms. Once those applications are made, we prepare the students by holding mock interviews and we give them feedback on those interviews and on their application form actually. Um, it just prepares them for life beyond Brayside. We give them advice about organisation, work experience, wider opportunities. And it's just basically about supporting the individual pupil to go to sixth form, whether that's state or independent or college, but they're supported all the way. Um, I'm gonna take another question from here. Um, P facilities on site. Um, actually, this has come up more than once. It's about, you haven't got many P facilities on site and how do you overcome it? Mrs. Coatman, do you want to answer that one? I'll answer that one, yes. Um, our PE facilities on site are our garden. Uh, we have a netball court. We have uh, a tarmac area for junior, um, junior children to play and to do various parts of their PE. And we have a hall as well. Um, so in terms of the early years children and the infant children, lots of our PE is done on site. We're fortunate enough to have other oak tree schools nearby, so we share facilities if we hold competitions. Um, adjacent to the school is a very large area of green, um, which our children use on a daily basis, uh, an open playing field that we hire all year round. That means we can have our football matches there, we can practice our athletics there. In the summer, we do our rounders games there. So if you're going past the school, you'll invariably see one or, or more of our, our groups of children doing their PE lessons there. Um, we do our daily mile there as well. We also, in non-COVID times, use Latin swimming pool, and we do that on a Monday morning. Our children from year three to year seven are seamlessly coached down to the pool. They have a swimming lesson straight back up and into lessons here. It takes no more than one period out of our day. Uh, we also use the Peter May Centre, um, that's for our senior sports, and that's a short journey away in one of the school minibuses. Um, we usually put double PE together for that, um, and then teachers from Normanhurst and from Brayside teach the PE there. Uh, we value the open space we have on site, but we also, we know that there are facilities surrounding the school that, that support our PE and sports curriculum. Yeah, thank you. Um, a question that came in on the registration form quite a few times was about curriculum and I'm, I'm interpreting it that um, you're saying what does the, your curriculum look like so again I'm going to hand over to Mrs Copeman. Um, we're proud of our curriculum, it's broad and it's balanced and it addresses the needs and the talents of individual pupils uh, and when you come and meet Mrs Moon and I we talk about an individualised curriculum. We follow the core subjects, the maths, the English, the science that you'd expect to find in every school. Um, there are languages taught in the school. We have French from kindergarten to year six and then again in year seven all the way through to GCSE. At year seven we add in another language and that's Spanish at the moment and children can also do Spanish at GCSE. Um, in the junior section, we enhance the curriculum with philosophy for children. Um, that's reception to year six. We think that this develops critical thinking and children's emotional intelligence. Um, and this uh, philosophical and ethical type thinking goes throughout our key stage three um, and into GCSE because we offer religious studies. Being part of an all through school means that we can use specialist teachers in both the juniors and the seniors. So we have specialist music, art, PE, drama, computing and French. And those teachers go all the way from reception right through to GCSE. So the children have the, the continuity um, of the, the same teaching staff all the way through as well.
Thank you. Um, a question that was put forward um, on the registration form was how involved did the senior pupils get with junior pupils? Um, it's actually quite difficult to say at this point because of the bubble situation mm. of being COVID safe, because um, our plans for all pupils to mix and get together um, have been slightly altered by the fact that we have to be um, COVID safe. Um, and that's not been as possible as, as we'd like to the start of term. But our vision is, is that senior pupils will take responsibility for junior pupils in their houses. Um, I think Mrs. Copeman mentioned earlier as well that we've got junior house captains. I know I certainly said it in my speech and you saw them on the virtual tour. Um, that's the first time we've, we've appointed house captains for the juniors and they'll be working with, to support the senior house captains with events at school. Um, but it's quite difficult to say at this, this point because they're obviously not allowed to mix as we'd like them to. But we have got a vision for that. Um, a question that's just come in, actually, um, it's just popped in just now. What sort of extra support do children get in school? And that's, uh, again, um, I can't answer that directly because support looks different for every individual. Because we offer an individual um, service here, um, what one student needs is different to the, the next student. But all I know is, is that we work really closely with parents, with the pupil, with staff and on occasions professionals. And we discuss those next steps in that support. Um, support is always delivered, delivered best through teaching, quality first teaching in the classroom. Um, but we look at individuals needs and we make an informed individual decision based on those needs because we are small and we can meet those needs. Um, another question that comes from on the registration forms was about assessing pupils throughout the year and what sort of intervention we have when they're not where they should be. So I'm going to ask Mrs Cohen to answer that one again. And my answer to this question about assessment links quite closely to Mrs Moon's answer about support that she's just given you. Um, assessment is very important throughout the school, right from kindergarten all the way through to GCSE. Teachers are assessing pupils in a variety of ways on a daily basis. Um, but if I give you the nuts and bolts of the assessment as we do it, um, junior pupils are assessed at the beginning of the year with baseline assessment and that's from reception to year six. Um, it's a computer based program in reception and in years one to six. Um, in reception, the children aren't left to use the computer themselves. They actually see something on the screen and the teachers input for them. But they give us a variety of results that are really interesting and then they help us plan. It's actually what we do with the assessment that's far more important than the assessment itself. Um, junior assessment is in CAS and that gives us math, spelling, reading, um, a developed ability of school. Um, and in addition, we're also doing written assessments for maths and English at that point as well. Um, then throughout the year, we'll assess all subjects in a variety of ways. Um, some of them will be harvest, um, a, gather, a knowledge harvest, for example, at the beginning of our topic work, um, so that we know what the children already know, because there's no point in diving in with your planning and your teaching if most of your class already have a lot of that knowledge. Assessment for learning happens on a daily basis. Uh, that can be very short assessments, which can be a series of three or four questions at the beginning of your maths lesson. Uh, that can tell you exactly where your children sit for that particular topic. Um, and then it helps you plan your lesson for the day. Um, so a mixture of informal and formal assessments throughout the year. In the seniors, again, assessments happening all the way through. Um, pupils in year seven take an ability test the, that will rank the pupils abilities um, and the data is shared with staff so that we benchmark and we assess throughout the year. The same happens again in year 10 and um, pupils will be given a grade band and this is where we're looking at GCSEs at this point. Um, so also a minimum predicted grade. Pupils are encouraged as well to set themselves an aspirational target because Mrs Moon talks about not saying that the lid is here and, and that's all you're going to get. What do you think you can get? Um, pupils are assessed every half term. The data is an analysed as well on a regular basis. And, and that's where it links in with our intervention and our support, which is applied appropriately. And then every pupil in the school has an end of year exam. Uh, feedback follows. Uh, that will be feedback from the senior leadership team to the staff and then the staff to the pupils. Um, there are re regular progress meetings between senior leaders and teaching staff throughout the year. Um, and again, identifying inter intervention and then moving that appropriately into place. Thank you. Um, a question that I've just got here, it says about, um, it says, how do we know um, 
how my child is getting on at school and um, this is a really common question that we have especially when you've come around on tours um, and I think we're extremely open and honest um, my door is always open as is Mrs Copeman's um, we love having parents in to chat to us you'll see junior staff at the beginning and end of every day so you can speak with a class teacher then Every half term, there's a dropping morning in the juniors where parents can meet the teacher, have a look around the classroom, look at the amazing work that's going on in books and in the room in general. Uh, we have regular parents evenings, which we are still going to have this term um, for all pupils in the school. Um, this is the chance to meet the teaching staff, but also to get a summative document on the details of your child's strengths and the targets they need to work on. Um, we report regularly and um, there's um, a facility we have called the portal and all of those reports are put on the portal for the parents to access at any time. You can print them and then you can see progress over time at any point. Um, but ultimately, we're always happy to have a chat with you about your child's work or anything else. Our door is always open. Um, I'm going to go to a question that was on the registration form. How early do we start with phonics and writing? And the Mrs. Copeland, I think you can answer that one. I can answer that. Phonics begins in lower kindergarten so essentially when your children are two and a half um, that doesn't mean that all children are ready to begin phonics at two and a half and certainly they may not be ready to begin writing at that age um, but we uh, there it built into our day will be an element of phonics so it may be learning a, a letter sound it may be letter of the week um, it could just be the recognition or we might be practicing writing then we go into blending in upper kindergarten and reception. Uh, we do provide lots of opportunities to write. It can be pencil and paper based, but it might be other sorts of equipment. It might be writing in sand. It might be using a paintbrush and some mud outside. Children start the journey when they're ready. Phonics are incredibly important. You can't learn to read and to write until you have your phonic knowledge. Um, but lower kindergarten is about equipping people with the skills to begin this journey. Um, and if it's not two and a half for them, it might be three and a half. But we want them more importantly to love writing and to love phonics and to love reading. So it's important to provide the opportunities and then to let the children run with it when they're ready. Thank you. I think we're probably only going to have um, time for one more question. And I, I will take it from here, actually. I'm going to blend two questions together. Um, someone has asked, why do you not offer ballet? And someone else about what extracurricular activities do you offer? So I think well, if we blend those together, do you mind answering that, Mrs. Coleman? No, that's Thank fine. Um, the simple answer to why don't we um, offer ballet is because most of our pupils take ballet lessons outside of school um, and they there are a range of ballet schools that, that children draw from. Um, but we do offer an incredible array, uh, array of clubs and extracurricular activities. So it starts with the, the easiest, the simplest, the earliest in the morning breakfast club. We open at 7.30, children can come in and have breakfast with us. And then there's a range of things. They might want to read, they might want to do some craft activities. Older children might want to finish off some homework, do some prep for the day. Then school begins and after school, when it ends at 3.30, we offer, we offer tea time club right through to six o'clock. But within tea time club, we have external providers coming in. Um, that can be cookery, street dance, karate. Uh, we have art club, Spanish club, coding, uh, a huge variety of sports clubs that change with the season. Um, very, very popular with our children. So we do ask you to book in advance because we have to have a limit on our numbers. But everything is posted on our website. Um, you can dip in and out of that. You can ask the office staff as well if you want to. Um, and be aware that some of our clubs do change. So you may have seen netball club or gardening club is a good one because that runs in the autumn term, but it doesn't run for the spring term um, simply because it's too cold to be outside. And actually not an incredible amount of growth happens so we're teaching the children we switch that to our <laughs> club and then gardening club re returns in the summer yeah thank you and i just will add to that i know mrs copeman said to have a look at our website about those clubs but there's an awful lot of other information on there as well particularly our newsletters and head teachers letters so please have a look on there because that gives you a little bit of a flavor of the school and the things that we do um, on a monthly basis 
I hope you found these question answers um, helpful. I'm sorry I couldn't answer all of them. I am aware that some were popping up on here, um, but I think we're, um, we're coming to the, the close of this really now. If I haven't answered your questions, please pick up the phone, email us, speak to Mrs. Amy, speak to Mrs. Copeland or I um, about anything that we haven't answered tonight. Uh, we'd love to have you around the school and chat more about your child and their educational journey at Brayside. Um, I look forward to meeting you. What I will say is that all this information that we've said tonight is going to be available afterwards. It will be sent to you. So please enjoy it with your cup of tea and biscuit at home. And I really look forward to meeting you soon. Thanks. Bye. 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 -bye.